The news, good evening. There have been long queues at special polling stations on the first day of voting in the national elections. At English River, hundreds of people were left outside as the four o'clock deadline for admittance passed. Election officials have blamed disparities between names submitted for early voting and names on their register. In sweltering heat from 7 in the morning until 4 this afternoon, essential workers who will be on duty on Saturday came to cast their votes, along with people travelling that day. At English River, two lines inched forward as the hours passed. Can I ask you how long you've been waiting? Four hours. Four hours? In Poor management. That's all I have to say. Uncomfortable? Un uncomfortable. Because we've been working from morning, and then waiting four hours, it's very, very hard. How long have you been waiting? Four hours. And how's that felt? That would Line one, seven, three, four. By midday, in temperatures of 31 degrees, only a few hundred of more than 3,000 registered voters have made the slow procession to cast their ballots. Okay. So it makes it difficult for us to allow the person to go because then we need to go back to the master register and check you know, whether the ID card is, you know, matches everything, it's just that the special register is the one not carrying all, all the details. Around the country, similar early polling attracted sneaking queues at Belazar, where safe social distancing looked compromised, while pensioners at Northeast Point exercised their voting rights. A special station was set up at Berjaya in Beauvalon for people in quarantine, and some 23 prisoners on remand at the former Coast Guard base also shared the franchise. Well, it's just past four o'clock, which means that this polling station is now officially closed, but only about 1,100 of those registered to vote here today have actually managed to cast their ballot so far, and some of these people have been waiting up to seven hours. Outside, closely observed by election monitors, there was tension among those who hadn't reached the line by the four o'clock cutoff. A much anticipated election, and many will tonight be wondering how they missed their chance to participate. And most uh, of uh, the special voting stations on Mahe, Pralin, Silhouette and Outer Islands are now closed. At the English River Special Polling Station, we understand that around 800 people are still waiting to cast their ballots. Uh, over 6,000 voters were registered to vote at the 10 special voting stations, including the Outer Islands. Uh, at the Belaza special voting station, the situation was not different. The queue remained long and people were waiting for hours in line to cast their votes. And according to our journalists on the ground, people are also still voting there. The East African Standby Force, or EASF Observation Mission, which uh, observed the elections taking place in the special polling stations today, paid a courtesy visit to the outgoing president, Danny Faw, who is the presidential candidate of United Seychelles this morning. Two members of the mission went to State House for this meeting with the outgoing president. They were the head of the mission, Dawit Sefa Wasihun, and the AESF's information director, Jules Waro. The AE the EASF, sorry, observation mission consists of nine members and they were present where voting took place today. Mr. Wasehun said that it is important to meet all the political parties which participate in the presidential and legislative polls. We're happy to see people um, moving freely and be ready for the election. And even from the uh, presidential debate, uh, we understood that it is a is, um, high level of political uh, maturity and mutual respect, actually, which is a very important part of uh, this process. Before we, we came here, uh, we had a short visit with the Electoral Commission, with the chairperson and his team. We had a discussion on, on what is going on. We have good understanding of what's going on now, and uh, we are confident that uh, the election process will go peacefully and uh, freely. And the EASF uh, Observer Mission delegation has also discussed issues relating to the election with the leader of One Seychelles, Alain Setange, who is taking part in both 
the legislative and presidential elections. The meeting took place at the One Seychelles Party office at the Bodco building this afternoon. The EASF delegation comprised of the head of the mission, Mr. Wasihon, and the director of information of the group, Mr. Waro. Some of the topics are about issues on um, how the election is going on. The, they have um, they, they have issues uh, they, they have raised. Uh, so issues of not having, like for example, uh, timely uh, accreditation for the political party for his members, and also about um, the differences that uh, he has about the electoral commission appointment. So we cannot say this and that, but we have to look into it, and because we need to have comprehensive understanding, then uh, we'll come up with the report at the end of the day. The SPTC is uh, closing its Victoria Terminal temporarily as of Friday evening. This is in line with recommendations from the Electoral Commission, as it is closing the Palm Street Road where the bus terminal and the Electoral Commission's office are located, as well as the 5th of June Avenue, on main election day, that is uh, on Saturday the 24th, buses will, as of Saturday until Sunday, pick and drop passengers at the Stade Populaire. SPTC says it will resume its normal operation on Monday morning. We will be operating with a special public holiday timetable. Um, uh, all operations will be done at the Stade Populaire car park. Um, uh, our last bus to leave uh, Victoria and all depots from the districts will be at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, we are advising members of the public to um, plan their journey according to our timetable to ensure that they have enough time to take the bus from Victoria to their respective district to, to vote and to get a ride back home. Um, uh, we also want to um, advise the public that there might be interruptions um, from our service uh, this weekend, especially on Sunday afternoon, if there are um, uh, traffic that will affect our service, we will inform the public on the changes through our Facebook page and the radio. SPTC has ensured that we have um, put enough uh, trips um, on the road for the public to move about on um, the election day. There are four active COVID-19 cases in the country. This includes one Seychellois who was staying at the quarantine facility at Beauvalon Bay and three foreigners. During this afternoon's Paris press conference, the Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Jude Gédéon, said that Seychelles has already engaged in the COVAX initiative in order to purchase a vaccine for the population as soon as it becomes available. Dr. Gédéon said that there are at least 10 promising vaccines which are already in phase three and may be available early or by the middle of next year. One is on Ilplat. Three are at the isolation center in Seychelles, in Perseverance. Uh, there's, there is one Seychellois among them, returning Seychellois who was in quarantine. And there are two visitors who are living in a hotel, in a category two hotel. They, have, uh, they were tested, tested positive after the fifth day, two days before they were due to travel to leave Seychelles. Now they, are, they were found to be positive, and they are all symptomatic and doing well. We have several vaccine initiatives globally, and Seychelles has signed in on the COVAX initiative to ensure that we do get access to an approved vaccine as quickly as it is uh, available. Um, Seychelles has made some commitment. The government of Seychelles has committed to the program and is working on making the first uh, advance payment. But today is the first day of voting, and what we have seen at the voting station, the pictures we have seen, and the phone calls we've received, the messages we've received, are not making us happy. And with this, we end this news uh, summary. Have a pleasant evening.